Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the New York City Department of Education Career and Technical Education Commission meeting. For this particular meeting, what I've chosen to do is combining is uh, we're going to combine our construction and sustainability commission with our engineering and architecture commission. The reason I'm doing this is because the speakers that we have featured today, they have a number of uh, resources, opportunities, and content that I think are pretty much relevant for both portfolios of schools. So instead of making uh, the meetings feel a bit duplicative or redundant, I decided to just simply combine them. But they are two separate and distinct commissions. I support a portfolio of about 75 uh, career and technical education programs throughout New York City. This group is a smaller piece of a bigger network of C high schools and programs. We have about 60,000 kids enrolled in our systems citywide. We have 130 high schools. I work with all of our high schools that deal with automotive technology, transportation, aviation, maritime, the construction trades, which includes the carpentry, electrical, plumbing, HVAC, and also uh, our portfolio of engineering schools, which includes robotics, pre-engineering, mechanical engineering, civil engineering, and all related subject matters. My co-host today is my colleague, Laura Buckle. She is our industry engagement manager that oversees our portfolio of schools that offer programs in business and finance, healthcare, and information technology. So if you have any professionals in your network that would like to be plugged in into our commissions that deal with these other sectors, please feel free to connect with her. Uh, my other colleague, I'm not sure if she's on this uh, Zoom call right now, but we also have Corinne Duran. She is our industry engagement manager that oversees our portfolio that offers programs in culinary, hospitality, tourism, as well as graphic design and uh, media technology trades. So altogether, we cover, again, close to 300 CTE programs in 130 high schools throughout New York City. And our director is Jessica Kemper. Uh, if you can see on your screen, uh, I'm going to go over very quickly the goals for today's meeting. Very, very simple, very, very straightforward. We are going to learn about general industry trends happening within the construction, engineering, and architecture sectors. So in case you're not familiar with our commission meetings, each of our commissions are uh, chaired by what we call our ambassadors of CTE into the industry. So these are our figureheads where they carry with them a lot of influence, a lot of clout, and they are the embodiment of the partnerships that we have with our uh, industry uh, counterparts throughout New York City. We have first uh, Dr. Michael Horidniciano. He's from the New York uh, University Attendant School of Engineering. We also have Mindy No from Perkins Eastman. These two professionals, uh, they oversee with me our engineering and architecture commission. Also in this meeting, we have Stephanie Burns, uh, VP from Turner Construction, and also Tamara Rivera from the New York City uh, District Council of Carpenters. These two ladies uh, oversee the construction and sustainability commission with me. Uh, so our next goal for today is we're also going to learn about work-based learning opportunities for your current students. I like to make these meetings as relevant as possible for our CTE educators. So anytime there are any opportunities that any of you have that you feel that our CTE kids can tap into, please let me know because I would love to feature you in a future commission meeting. So whether you're offering internships or career day or you're willing to be a guest speaker, or you're offering employment opportunities for entry-level talents, whatever it is, if there's something where you feel as if you can be a resource to our CTE programs and you would like me to feature you in one of these commission meetings, please just let me know. Next, we're gonna learn about post-secondary training opportunities for our graduating students. So in addition to talking about opportunities that may exist for our current students who are enrolled in grades 9, 10, 11, and 12. I also like to feature our partners who may have, whether it's scholarships, employment opportunities, or apprenticeship opportunities 
um, for our alumni as well. We like to keep the momentum going. I know that a lot of DOE tends to basically wash their hands of their responsibilities of what happens to the kids after they walk out the school doors after 12th grade. But I like to use these commissions as a resource so that industry and our teachers can work together and share apprenticeship training employment opportunities for our graduating students and our alumni. And finally, what I think is the most important part of these meetings and what I like the most is the fact that you can use these meetings to connect with each other. So if you see somebody else on the call that you wanna to connect to, uh, feel free to uh, message them directly. The chat box, the chat box is open and available. You can message everybody at the same time. You can message other individuals directly. If you want to have a side conversation while the meeting is going on, that is more than a okay with me because at the end of the day, uh, the synergies that happen in these meetings, that's what I think are the, are the most uh, beneficial parts of this meeting. I wanted to give a shout out to some of our new CTE teachers. And as my phone is blown up, I don't know why people try to call me while I'm in the middle of my meeting. I'm not gonna answer the phone. All right, so I, I wanna say welcome to our new CTE teachers. I hope um, all of these individuals are on the call. We have Emily Apple from Arts and Design High School. She is their new architecture teacher. We have Chris James from Bronx Design and Construction, um, and, and Construction Academy, excuse me. And we have Nick McLean from High School for Energy and Technology in the Bronx. Israel Rosario, Newtown High School. Kevin Singh from Beta. Now, Kevin, he is not by any stretch of the imagination new to CTE, but... Sorry, who's the host? I'm the host of my meeting. Does somebody just mute me? All right, so I wanted to uh, re-welcome Kevin Singh back to our CTE universe. Welcome, Kevin. And uh, Jaron Walker, I'm not sure if he's on the, on the call, but um, he's going to be one of our new electrical teachers also at the uh, Science, Technology, and Research Early College High School in Erasmus. If there's any other... If there are any other educators that I'm missing, if I didn't give you a shout out, please use the chat box, introduce yourself, let us know who you are. And also to our new industry partners, new post-secondary partners, I wanna welcome you to our commission as well. And of course, as always, this commission is not possible without our core members. You've been with us since the very beginning. Uh, on our Google Drive, we have a list of all our industry partners and our core members. I welcome you all back to our commission for this school year and feel free to connect with the educators that you see on the line today. Now, before I turn it over to Stephanie Burns and Tammy Rivera, I just wanted to make a few quick announcements. Uh, for our schools that are on uh, this Zoom call today, we have a renewed articulation agreement with the New York Institute of Technology. Um, big shout out to Jessica Kemper for putting this together. She sent out an email to all of our CTE programs, which offer architecture uh, and engineering CTE programs. So if your principal did not already get this email, please let me know so that we can resend it. As a reminder, articulation agreements are extremely important in terms of getting your CTE program accredited by New York State. So if you didn't already get that email, please let me know. We're seeking CTE teachers. Uh, we need somebody to teach AutoCAD. If you have anybody in your network that has a degree or work experience in AutoCAD, you can shoot that uh, email over to me. Uh, Energy Tech needs that teacher. Um, HVAC, uh, I know it's been very, very difficult to find HVAC technician these days. We have unfortunately only one official HVAC program in all of New York City. And um, a good buddy of mine, Pete Gonzalez, he's gonna be retiring this year. So we need somebody to replace him to keep that program going. So if you have anybody who has background in heating, ventilation, air conditioning, who wants to make that transition to becoming a full-time teacher, send the resume my way. And finally, we also need a plumbing teacher. Uh, this is something that I've been trying to help Queens Tech with. Uh, so uh, as we all know, we, we are short in the skilled trades. And in order to help the next generation of young people keep these professions going, we need to keep our CTE programs going. So please, if you have anybody who wants to make that transition into teaching shop class for a living, send a resume over to me and I'll walk them through uh, the process of getting their transitional aid license so that hopefully they can join our CTE system. 
All commission meeting notes and resources, they are found at bit.ly slash CTE commission. So all recordings, all meeting notes for this meeting and all meetings going back to 2016, they are found publicly in our Google Drive link right there. We have a CTE strategic plan that uh, we'd like to share with all partners and educators in this meeting today. This is also found on our public Google Drive. Uh, this document consolidates and encapsulates all of our goals as a CTE community. We have what our mission and our vision is for the next five years. Um, it gives a summary of our programs and what we're looking to accomplish and what our challenges are. So please feel free to take a look at that document in your spare time. And um, as a reminder, we have our own website as well. DOE is a massive system. 1,800 schools, 900,000 plus kids. It's a maze to navigate the website. We have our own website, the CTE website. Uh, there's still a few kinks that are being worked out, but for the most part, um, it should be ready to go. If you wanna find out more about our schools or our programs and how you can in get involved in our work, please uh, uh, tap into that website. That is Corinne Durant, her child that she's been uh, working on over the past few months and the website looks way better than it did before. So please feel free to check it out. And I'm also gonna ask my colleagues to drop in the attendance slash survey link into the chat box. Before you log out, make sure you take a couple of minutes to fill that out. All right, so again, welcome to everybody. Hope you enjoy your day. And next I'm gonna turn it over to Tamara Rivera, our co-chair of our Construction and Sustainability Commission. Tammy. And you're still muted, Tammy. You're still muted. Make sure you unmute. Give it up for Gav. Come on. He's excellent at what he does. Come on now. You really are. Um, yes. <laughs> um, welcome, everybody. My name is Tammy Rivera, and I'm uh, a 27-year member of the New York City District Council of Carpenters, and I'm proud to be a co-chair with uh, the Construction Commission of the New York City CTE with Stephanie Burns who's from Turner Construction. I don't think she's here just yet, but uh, a little bit about myself. Um, um, for the past 13 years, I no longer work with my tools. I actually work for the council as a council representative uh, in the area standards department. In other words, I'm an organizer. I'm the bad guy that some people don't like, but I'm also the good guy for a lot of uh, the community, let's say. Um, I am also the first woman to have this position 13 years ago, and we need more. So uh, all you ladies out there, if you're into construction, if you think if this is something for you, uh, we're unstoppable. This is for you as well. Um, for everybody, we have nine locals. We have four general locals, so general carpentry like sheetrock, framing, um, woodwork. And they're all in Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, Bronx, and Staten Island. And then we have what's called specialties, like floor covers. If you, if, if you get into a specialty, that's all you do. You're not in a general um, uh, carpentry. You, you specify in one thing. So like with floor covers, that's all you do. You do floor covers, um, whether it's hardwood, where, whether it's carpet. You also have millwrights. Millwrights deal with... Um, conveyor belts, like in the airport where you throw your luggage, you know, that's our work, um, as well as turbines. You have the dock builders and the timbermen. The dock builders, you see them all the time if you're driving on the highway uh, by the water, or the timbermen are usually in the street. Uh, we also have concrete high rise. So all the high rises that you see in Manhattan, and they're slowly coming out to the outer boroughs like Brooklyn, uh, many of them are made out of concrete. If they're not made out of steel, they're made out of concrete. That is our work. So um, we do everything from putting piles into the ground to putting the hardware and for you to turn your key into your apartment, we do it all. So if this is something you're interested, I will put my email on the chat room and you are welcome to reach out to me. Also the recruitment is gonna be happening in the end of the year or actually in the new year will be recruiting for general carpentry and starting the second Wednesday, the second Wednesday of February and every month after that, we will be recruiting for all specialties at 395 Hudson Street. That's in the village of Manhattan. 
uh, again, I will put my email. So please don't hesitate to email me for any of these kind of questions. I also go out to speak at schools and to help with recruitment. We also have our apprenticeship is anywhere from four to five years. It's now equivalent to 10,000 hours. It used to be four, four years. Now you have to do 10,000 hours before you get your top pay. Uh, either way, you can't beat getting a fair wage with benefits and knowing zero about the industry. Um, you learn your, and you go to school part-time, you're working full-time. We also have a free pre-apprenticeship program and it's called Building Works. Building Works also goes out to all the boroughs to recruit. They will be recruiting again right after the holiday. It's about a, a five week program and it's a direct ent entry into the carpenters union. So basically when you go in there, you're going in there to be a carpenter where there are other pre-apprenticeship programs uh, like helmets to, hard, hard, uh, helmets to Hard Hats and uh, Construction Skills 2000. Uh, and they're more generic, we can go into other trades as well. So again, um, thank you, Gav. Uh, if you have any questions, I will put my email in the chat room. Again, welcome everybody. This is like a big party. Please ask your questions while we're on. This is the time now. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gav. All right, thanks, Tammy. And I wanted to address a question in the chat box. Uh, the question asked, whatever happened to the Success Via Apprenticeship Program? to replace retiring and, uh, sorry, I'm getting more chats coming in the box. All right, whatever happened to the Success Via Apprenticeship Program to replace retiring or retired teachers, do we still have that? Yes, the SVA program still exists. Uh, please get in touch with either Samantha Joseph or Sharon Prince Yearwood for any questions about that. I can give you their contact information if you have any further questions. All right. Uh, if Stephanie Burns is not on the line, I'm going to turn it over to our co-chair from our Engineering and Architecture Commission, the Romanian sensation himself, Dr. Michael Horidniciano. Dr. H. Yeah, let me unmute myself. Um, well, um, I just, uh, I think that it is very important to note that we are actually entering a very uh, important, uh, 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 in effect, uh, uh, era in the construction uh, with a new infusion of $1.2 billion in our infrastructure. And as a result, I think it is going to be very important that we are going to look at uh, a variety of topics and try to, to prepare our students to actually become the next generation of engineers and architects. Uh, part of the uh, issue in the uh, civil infrastructure impacts social equity. And, um, and it really has come recently to the forefront of political and social commentary throughout uh, the United States. And, uh, and, and the idea of, of uh, creating equal access to transportation green spaces, clean water, economic development. It is very important and it is an integral part of uh, the Biden administration infrastructure uh, plan. Uh, we should, uh, uh, in effect, uh, guide our students to engage in, in this type of professions. Uh, the demand is gonna be incredibly, uh, um, in terms of growth, and we will need at the various levels to provide, and particularly at the university level, I think that we'll need to provide the, uh, the, the proper uh, education for the new uh, generation of uh, engineers. Uh, uh, so uh, basically my point, I, what I'm, gonna, I'm trying to convey uh, this afternoon is that we need to encourage more and more of our students to actually turn into the uh, uh, STEM programs to, to, uh, uh, to, act, to, to, to provide the necessary education to bring them into uh, the new economic reality of infrastructure that uh, will require a lot of people to join. With that, I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Mindy Noe that she is my co-chair. 
Thanks, Michael, Dr. Mike, and uh, thanks, Kev. So welcome, everyone. And as we all navigate this post-pandemic world, the focus on education inclusion will be different for each institution. However, I think what should remain consistent is our commitment as a uh, united community to recognize that not all people experience learning in the same way. Uh, recognizing the steps that we've taken, but looking forward to realize that uh, we have to be flexible and dynamic to be able to empower students and educators alike. And communication will be a huge key to that success of adapting to this new normal. So CTE is a strategic imperative that uh, drives innovation and growth. And the fact that we need for all of us to look forward as positive atmospheres for change is even more evident today. So. I'm looking forward to working with you and our industry partners and our schools to continue the conversation for positive change. But as we start to look at the economy opening up and as Dr. Mike's noted, the infrastructure funding, but also how we could be flexible to allow for educators as well as students to be aware of these industries earlier rather than trying to capture them at a later stage in life. So, um, and being able to, provide that inclusion and communication will be a huge part of that. So I look forward to the conversation and hopefully uh, being able to meet with you in person soon, but uh, there's a connectivity issue as well as communication that will be the key to the success of that. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mindy, and thank you, Dr. H. And again, for our CTE educators and work-based learning coordinators on this call, if you need uh, industry connections, please reach out to me, reach out to our chairs of these commissions. I don't see uh, Stephanie Burns on, so I'm going to keep the agenda moving. Uh, it is my pleasure to feature one of my favorite people from the New York City Department of Buildings. She's been so instrumental in providing work-based learning opportunities to our kids. Uh, I'm speaking of none other than Nicole Wiley. Nicole? Hey, Gav. Thanks so much. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Nicole Wiley. I'm the Deputy Director here at Department of Buildings of Community Programming. And I am here today to discuss um, DOB's Youth Leadership Council. Um, so our Youth Leadership Council, surprisingly, um, we are in year three, uh, time flies. And um, so our Youth Leadership Council this year is going to focus on construction safety, sustainability, um, architectural design, as well as forensic engineering. And so for the past three years, what we've been doing um, is recruiting um, students who are in the 10th, between 10th and 12th grade um, to apply for our Youth Leadership Council through the New York City Service um, website. Um, and I will include that on the chat. Um, and so for 10 weeks, um, these students will learn from our um, experts here at DOB regarding the aforementioned subject areas. Um, and so they'll just learn about the content and then what they'll do is towards the end of the year, uh, the end of the, the um, program, they will be grouped together usually by their interests um, and present, uh, develop a presentation and then present to um, their respective schools, um, partnering New York City agencies such as Department of Education, Mayor's Office of Sustainability, New York City Service, um, Department of Buildings. And, um, and this program has really worked and it has enlightened, I, we realized we that have enlightened our students. The students that come from CTE schools, they blow my mind. They're absolutely amazing. They're like geniuses when it comes to um, sustainability and construction safety. Um, and so it's just um, amazing to see they're not expand their knowledge and really hear from um, our DOB staff, you know, just to kind of expand on what they're learning in school. Um, so the applications are open. They have been open since the end of October. The application deadline is December 3rd. And we do understand that they sometimes can be some late stragglers. So the soft deadline is December 3rd um, and it's from 3.45 to 5 p.m. The concern here though is, so for the past two years, um, it has been, uh, we're still virtual. We're going to do virtual this year, but for the past two years, the uh, students have been learning uh, virtually, remote learning. Um, and so now we are just pushing and we're just, asking all of you guys to please um, really impress upon the students that, okay, if they're really interested in this, they really have to be committed um, and that we're virtual. 
and it starts after school. So being that they're in-person learning now and we're still virtual, that is where we're concerned. That's where we need your help in pushing the students to ensure that they attend um, every week. Um, it starts, our Youth Initiative Council starts February 8th, um, and then it will end in May, the end of April and, and early May. Um, and so we're just excited about this third year, this is the third annual, um, and we're looking forward to hearing from your applicants, to hearing from your students um, and applying for, applying for the Youth Leadership Council. Thanks so much. Thank you, Nicole. So again, for our educators that are looking for work-based learning opportunities for their kids, please uh, have your kids sign up for the Youth Leadership Council being run by Nicole and the Department of Buildings. I wanted to give a quick shout out to John Widlin. Uh, the famous John Widlin has joined us. Welcome, John. <laughs> and Thank you so much. Yeah, it's great to be here. Yeah, I'm, here I'm here representing uh, HSET. I hope some of them are on the, on the, on the Zoom call as well, but uh, thank you for the invite. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you got We're it. here, John. Don't you worry. Oh, good. Good. And also, please remember to pay attention to the chat box. We have Nicole Bertrand. Remember that uh, she oversees the construction skills program. Her contact info is right there. They're currently recruiting. So make sure that your kids know about that. Also, Leah Rambo, we have a direct entry arrangement uh, with local 28 sheet metal workers. That's another opportunity for your kids. Uh, please, all of these resources, I'm doing these meetings for you, all right? They're, they're not for my benefit, they're for your benefit, they're for the benefit of your kids. So make sure you take this info back to your classrooms. Okay, next on the agenda, we have my sole brother, Dwayne Norris. Uh, Dwayne, um, are you with us? I, I really would love for you to share uh, the opportunities that you have for our graduating students and our alumni. Uh, I get all of your emails about your training programs. I'd love for you to share more about your company and your opportunities with the folks on the call today. Most definitely, I'm here. Hey, good afternoon, Gav. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for having me. Let me pull up my screen here, if that's all right. Um, so yeah, Gav, always a pleasure to be with the team here. Um, my name is Dwayne Norris. I'm the co-founder of a company called Soulful Synergy. Um, started with my best friend and business partner uh, eight plus years ago. Uh, really because we wanted to be able to provide more resources and opportunities for the communities that we serve. Um, similar to many of you, we focus on workforce development solutions. We're looking at training and opportunities uh, for the youth, but also trying to make sure that we're making the pairings on the back end with the employers and the industry leaders and partners that really make job placement a reality. And so we are a full service, minority owned, uh, socially conscious consulting company. We work on workforce development issues, sustainability issues, and community development issues. Um, and we really kind of specialize in that facilitation of partnerships where we're leveraging our connections in the private sector, public sector, nonprofit sector, and working directly with the community. Um, we have a number of programs I won't cover today, but just to give you a, a sense of the curriculum that we've developed and the different types of programs that we have. There's some that are certification based, providing uh, trainings with OSHA, security guard, flagger, scaffold, FO1, FO4, fire guard, security. Um, CPR, et cetera. We have trainings that are very focused on hands-on, construction-based training. As you'll notice, some of the masteries are carpentry, drywall, painting, uh, sanding, um, electrical work. The one we're being focused on today is our Clean Energy Academy. Um, we also have trainings focused on mindset, on financial literacy, et cetera. So we really do try to take the full holistic approach to uh, personal and professional development for our students. And we work a lot with different nonprofits, schools, and government agencies to implement these types of programs. Uh, the program that Gav gets blasted out quite a bit is our Clean Energy Academy. It's a virtual training program. So while COVID has you know, made it difficult for a lot of people to engage in training, uh, we've been fortunate to be funded by NYSERDA um, going on to our seventh time. So uh, they seem to like our program and seem to appreciate what we're doing and um, have allowed us to, to continue to expand this program. And it's a program focused on energy efficiency, kind of in the lane of energy auditors, uh, but it expands well beyond that. So it's not the only job uh, track that we're, we're looking for. Um, but the Clean Energy Academy is a 60 hour training. It's a technical uh, training on energy efficiency for small commercial buildings. So we specifically have aligned this program with Con Edison's SMB called Small Medium Business Program, because there's a huge demand in that program. Um, and so if you know that New York City has a ton of buildings, um, both commercial and residential, and buildings contribute about 70% of the greenhouse gas emissions or carbon emissions, 
our goal is to try to figure out ways to reduce that by training a labor force that's knowledgeable for every sales role, uh, auditing role, installation role, and really making sure that we can help to reduce that consumption and, and lower those carbon emissions. So we align our trainings with uh, national recognized certifications like the BPI, AEE, and OSHA. Um, again, the course is focused on the auditor because we believe that that is the key kind of catalyst, that role that will really help to determine whether somebody takes action or not. Um, you need somebody to go in and audit the systems and give that building owner back a comprehensive report so they can make an informed decision. So the more auditors you have that can go out there and explain the value of energy efficiency and the reason for people to upgrade or, or retrofit their systems, um, you know, we believe that that's really how you're going to drive down uh, the greenhouse gas emissions. So not to go into too much detail, there's plenty of stuff in these slides that I'll, I'll cover in kind of light, um, but we have a number of different training courses. Uh, we have electrical systems courses, thermal systems courses, and now electrified heat, clean heat, as that's going to be the next wave uh, of uh, systems and technologies that are rolling out. Um, we align with, again, a lot of the different uh, nationally recognized certifications. We're uh, funded by NYSERDA in partnership with Con Edison and in partnership with Wildan, gives us a lot of access to the job market. And so we're focused on training for these kind of eight different career tracks with a specialized focus on the ones you see highlighted in blue. Uh, sales and outreach, you need credible messengers to go out in the community and educate the building owners, uh, business owners, or, or uh, residential building owners about the need, again, for these types of, uh, of upgrades. You need the auditing and analysis team. You need someone to be able to project manage uh, those roles. We would like to be able to do more in installation, but COVID has made it a little bit tricky. And so this is where I think these types of collaborations can really help because you have so many really talented students who come out of your programs who already know how to do lighting install, um, et cetera, just need to know some of the, the finer points around energy efficiency and sustainability um, as an industry. And so we have had really good success with the students that come out of the CTE schools, enter our program and find job placement. And we have some good examples of that. Uh, Pre-COVID, everything in person, going out and doing audits, having graduation ceremonies at Con Ed's headquarters, all good stuff. Uh, Post-COVID has been a little trickier, but we have been able to leverage a lot of strong relationships. Um, and again, that, that resource that we have with Will Dan and Con Edison give us access to a lot of market partners. Um, these are all the contractors who work on the small medium business program, of which there's more than 100 plus in any of the different programs that, uh, that Con Ed oversees. And um, we've been able to get a lot of outreach partners uh, to be able to refer participants to this program. We've seen 90% employment, 82% job placement for the students who are unemployed and looking. Um, and that's really phenomenal, even during COVID, that we've been able to maintain such high metrics on job placement and um, really trying to make sure that our recruitment aligns with the types of job roles that are out there. Uh, there is no prerequisites for the training. We have students that come in with less than high school, some that have graduated high school, some that have two-year college. We have four-year and graduate degrees. We have program or a partnership with New York Institute of Technology. Um, so we do have students that come from their master's program that take this class, but it really is meant for all levels, uh, all grades and all ages. We have a uh, pretty good gender, but we can do better on that part, but we do have a pretty good representation of females. Um, and again, our employment rates have been pretty well aligned. These are the job tracks. I won't go into this in heavy detail either, but the types of roles that we're aligning for, again, everything front end and everything back end. And uh, for some of them, you do need degrees, uh, but we have done a pretty good job of identifying the gaps or the openings and opportunities in the marketplace uh, where you don't need uh, bachelor's or or graduate degrees. So that's what these arrows represent. And we kind of walk our students where the opportunities in this field could be if they wanted to get into project management, again, how many years they would need, et cetera. So we kind of help them identify what their career roadmap and journey would look like if they wanted to pursue uh, a role in the clean energy industry. We dissect things based on sectors. So small and large commercial and residential is how we kind of group the buildings. And then when it comes to the actual types of technologies, we're looking at electrical, thermal, just to simplify things. We know that there's a lot of different um, forms of, um, of energy efficiency out there, but we wanna really kind of group it in a way that our participants can understand. And so we kind of section them off into energy efficiency or renewable energy, and then on the side of electrical or thermal, and we help to have them navigate their course in one of those sectors or one of those lanes. Um, our curriculum is really heavily focused on policies, market drivers, right? We wanna understand where the industry is currently in New York, and so we align the training with those policies, helping our participants understand what the clean energy ecosystem looks like. 
meaning where's the money, where are the jobs, uh, where are the penalties and, the, and the, the fines coming so that buildings have to take action. So we want to align ourselves with where those opportunities and trends are. Um, and then, as I noted, you know, we're focused on some of the systems, so lighting and HVAC systems under our electrical course or building envelope heating systems and domestic hot water systems under our thermal course. Um, again, at the back end, our goal is for participants to be familiar with these energy auditing processes. And what makes our training very unique is that it's directly aligned with Con Edison's software tools and calculators. So the same tools that they're using in Con Edison's programs, the same tools that the large contractors are using and the small contractors are using are the same tools that we're teaching within the class. So when participants are finished with the program, uh, they're very market ready, very you know valuable to the employers who are looking to hire. Um, we use real case studies, we prepare for nationally recognized certifications, and we have a whole internship and job placement process uh, post program that helps people with career road mapping, resumes, cover letters, et cetera. And you know, again, really make sure that we align with the goals um, that we know that our employers are looking to hire for. So that is our approach. We have qualified instructors who have been in the field, been in this industry for over a decade. Uh, we use experience-based projects. Again, pre-COVID, we were having participants go out and perform audits in schools and churches and buildings. Um, now it's a little bit trickier. Um, but we still want to make sure that we're getting that hands-on experience when possible. But if not, we use real-life case studies within the classroom. We have career support services. Again, we help our participants connect to employers. And, um, you know, the team that's right now putting this program together is mostly a combination of MWBE businesses and large, you know, behemoths like Will Dan and, and Con Edison. Um, but we're always looking for more partnerships and more opportunities. So if anyone would like to learn more about the program, uh, they can definitely reach out to me and email me as I'm the director of outreach and recruitment and one of the program managers. Um, or you can visit the website at www.cleanenergyacademy.org and find out more about that specific sustainability training. Um, if there's other trainings you'd like to know about, you can always touch base with me as well, and I'll make sure uh, I provide those resources. So I know that was a lot, Gav, but you know, that's how I do Thanks, Dwayne. Do we have any questions for Dwayne before we move on? All right. Uh, so, Dwayne, Jared Jacks from. Yes. yes, go ahead. Hey, Dwayne, awesome presentation, man. Love what you guys are doing. Um, Thank you, sir. That, that roadmap that you shared, where you're connecting some of the you know, accreditations that you've seen with industry and also at different levels of education. Mm -hmm. It seems like that is something that in, in the previous conversations that we've had with the group would, would add a lot of value here and also obviously for the kids. Yep. Uh, you think you could share that with us? Because I feel like that, that was one thing that in our last conversation, people were talking like, you need to get this after a four year degree. And it was like, well, what are we doing in high school that can prepare that like that middle step? And it yep. seems like you guys are knocking that part out of the park. So that would yeah. be great if you could share that. I, I could share it. I hope it's not confusing, but I don't mind sharing it to Gav or to you. Um, I'll say, you know, it's, it's part of the green economy lesson that we do. And all of our programs start off with this green economy overview. So again, you can kind of get the top down view. Who is NYSERDA? You know, who's Con Ed? What role do they play? How do they get funded? Where's the money for programs? How does it trickle down to implementation on the ground and to the contractors? Um, and then we go into what are the job roles that facilitate that and what kind of certifications you might need. So what I would say is if you wanted to, we could probably even work to get like a, a truncated version of that and do like a maybe one hour, two hour with the kids. Maybe it's virtually, um, but find ways that we can start implementing that type of training. Because to me, that's the goal, right? To introduce students younger and younger to the opportunities in this type of industry um, and not wait till they have to graduate to kind of navigate, but to your point, uh, trying to find ways to introduce it. So I think our instructors will be excited about finding ways to, to bring that to the classrooms um so yeah i could share it but you know if you want to follow up or have a further conversation about how we can start introducing you know one hour you know shorter segments i think we'd be happy to do that as well all right great uh lauren you had a question yeah i just have a question uh what is the time frame for the applications like when do your classes start when does the program start and what can we what can we share no nope, good good question so um we try to launch two months in advance of any cohort. Um, so I, you know, as I said, I lead the recruitment. Sometimes I, it's perfect and sometimes it's not. Um, 
but we have the next set of cohorts are going to be launching towards the end of January and the dates haven't been finalized yet. Um, and so that's something that we are trying to make sure that we do have finalized. We tend to run our classes in two different options, uh, daytime and nights and weekends. And we'll usually run the one that has the highest demand first. So as of right now, I have like a backlog of people looking for the daytime, a lot of people out of work and looking for opportunities um, and have time during the day. And, and that one is only, again, if we're running at 60 hours, it only takes two weeks to complete and obviously a quicker time to get, you know, uh, into the labor force. If we run the nights and weekends, it's usually about a five week class. Um, and so um, I'll say we have four programs that are gonna be launching in January, um, essentially, and they'll be a little bit staggered. So not all of them are starting January, but we've been funded by NYSERDA for four different programs in partnership with Staten Island Jewish Community Center, in partnership with Westcop, in partnership with Archdiocese of New York, and in partnership with NYIT. And so I would say the, the website application um, has the opportunity for participants to sign up for the class that's most in line with them. And then once they do that, I'll be reaching out uh, when the dates are set. So the recruitment process entails them uh, filling out the application and then they get contacted to do uh, to set up an interview. So they'll get a Calendly link where they can schedule the interview time that works best for them. And, um, you know, it's really 30 minutes. It's not really anything intense. They don't have to have a background in the industry. It's really just to get a sense of if they have the time to commit, if they have a passion for this space. Um, if they understand what the program objectives and expectations are, uh, which all that is sent ahead of time. Um, so, so yeah, so that's literally our recruitment process. I would say right now you could expect mid to late January as the next cohort dates. Thank you. Sure. All right. Thanks. Thanks again, Duane. If there are no further questions or comments, we're going to move on. Uh, next. It is my privilege to introduce you all to a woman who is very, very passionate about her job, Caroline Passion uh, from New York City Landmarks Preservation Commission. We actually had the privilege of coordinating together because some of you may remember that earlier this year, we had a citywide virtual career panel discussion and Caroline was one of the individuals who so proficiently represented her organization and careers that were available within her sector. So Caroline, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Hi, thank you so much and good afternoon, everybody. Um, just hearing everybody speak today um, is something that uh, I think it, it's important that you will know that in your career, you'll probably end up uh, dealing with us. Um, so I'm Caroline, I'm from the uh, Landmarks Preservation Commission and we're an agency that started um, in, the in 1965 um, we are the mayoral agency and we're responsible um, for protecting and preserving our architecturally significant, historically significant sites um, and structures. And we began because uh, there was um, a building called Penn Station, not the Penn Station that you know today, uh, but it was um, this building on along 7th Avenue um, to 8th Avenue, and it was demolished in 1963. Um, and this is what incentivized and galvanized like the grassroots movement for historic preservation. Uh, this is the building on the left um, and what you see today. So um, our agency um, has designated over 37,000 buildings, um, structures and sites throughout all five boroughs. We have individual landmarks, um, historic districts, as well as scenic landmarks. Yes, we did designate the Coney Island Boardwalk. Um, we do say that that is a significant and cultural um, part of our history. Um, and I know we talk about the built environment a lot, but I, I did want to have everyone know that we do also uh, consider sites that you don't see, maybe that you actually walk on. Uh, we have an archaeology department, um, and you know, whenever there are sites uh, throughout the city, when there's excavating to be done for a new building, sometimes our department does go out to the site, un uncovers um, some, you know, um, areas of vessels or um, you know, glass, and they actually go into a repository that you could actually visit. Um, and also on our website, you could see um, what else you can find um, at this repository. And then we have our research department um, where we evaluate um, what buildings, what sites and structures are culturally significant, as well as you know, for their architecture and for their um, history in our, in our city. 
but we recently um, designated a Native American site in Staten Island, as well as this memorial in Chinatown. So we're also trying to do, um, trying to also include uh, historically underrepresented um, people um, within our uh, areas of landmarking. And our research department also um, has done um, sort of kind of highlighting some of these areas um, in our city, uh, recognizing uh, the places where um, black, black history has taken place, um, as well as the marathon that just happened uh, this weekend. There's a story map. Um, and as you go from Staten Island across the Verrazano, we've highlighted different historic districts um, and landmarks along the way. So if you decide that you may want to run next year, maybe take a look at this and you will see all the sites um, throughout our boroughs. And um, where I work is a preservation department. And I thought this was most relevant to those of you who are um, here today. You know, we review um, all proposed work um, that are being proposed at buildings and sites and structures uh, with under our jurisdiction. And we uh, may come to um, DOB uh, seeking a permit for some local law work like facade inspection related work. Uh, if it's located within a historic district, you would need to file with us. And we do review the drawings. We review architectural, uh, engineering, structural, um, all of those sets, and we look. Basically, we look at the exterior. Um, we look at the facade and what's being affected, uh, and we propose and whatever's being proposed um, around the site. And we do uh, work closely with architects and engineers um, when you're proposing work um, on a building within the district. And as to also want to highlight how we also um, have different. Uh, assistance in terms of uh, guidelines uh, when installing solar panels, barrier-free access, and then most recently um, with COVID, we had so many restaurant owners within our historic districts that wanted to open up sidewalk sheds and, and those um, kiosks that you see on the roadbed, and we wanted to make that easier for them. So I, I bring up, um, my agency is not uh, is something that I think you will come across um, in your work. I think that we closely work with architects, engineers, skilled uh, people in the in the craft, HVAC, uh, you know, bricks, mortar. I mean, we we pretty much uh, deal with all um, all aspects of that work. And I think it, it across your career, you may um, deal with us. And I also want to highlight our grant program. Uh, this is a federally funded program that um, is available to low to moderate income owners and nonprofits um, uh, throughout the city. And we do a lot of restorative work here as well. So there's a possibility down the line, if you are going to maybe resurface brownstone or repoint um, bricks or mortar, uh, this is something that you may come across and we may need you for. Um, and some just before and after um, with the house and ivy, you didn't even know there were windows at this point at this point and a contractor came in and removed that, repointed, repainted, did some wood repairs. Uh, stoop in Mott Haven in the Bronx. Uh, this is also um, uh, one of the grant projects that we worked on. So this is just something to just keep in mind when you, when you throughout your career uh, that you may come across a building within a historic district um, and maybe we will meet on site one day. Uh, we don't have, unfortunately, we don't have any current internship opportunities available, but we are going to participate in the Summer Youth Employment Program. So if you think you might be interested, um, I just wanted to highlight a few of our departments and see that you, um, see if you might be interested um, next summer. Uh, you know, we'd love to see you here. Great. Thank you, Caroline. Any questions or comments before we move on? All right. All right. Thanks. Thanks again, Caroline. It's good to reconnect with you. Thank you. All right. So uh, we're going to move on in the agenda. What I like about this commission, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that not only do we have a number of established city agencies and partners like uh, Caroline's department and all the other uh, speakers that are here today, we also have a number of 
I think very valuable and worthwhile emerging initiatives. And that being said, I wanted to feature Salome from uh, CUNY Workforce Initiative. Uh, she and her team are putting together what I think um, is gonna be the next big thing within uh, the CTE world that a lot of your young people can take advantage of. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Salome. Yes, um, I'm just quickly going to share my screen. Um, and thanks so much for the introduction, Gap. Um, it's a pleasure to be here and meet everyone. Uh, so I'll jump right into it. Just give me one second. All right, so my name is Salome Rinianidze. I am the Associate Project Manager at the CCNY Infrastructure Workforce Initiative. So today I will be um, introducing you to our new initiative. And um, so the three key points I wanted to point out to all of you is that the training is not up and running yet, but we are planning to launch the pilot program in, um, at the end of January. Also, if you'd like to be one of our industry partners, or if you'd like to recommend one, you know, CT high schools to our initiative, please um, let me know. I'm more than happy to share additional materials with all of you. And I'll drop my email in the chat box later. So, um, oh, second. All right. Uh, so, why did we, why was this initiative, um, you know, why did it emerge and how? Um, so as you may know, the, the future of infrastructure will look very different um, than it is today. Um, we will see different innovations, um, autonomous electric vehicle fleets, bridges that can repair themselves, new energy sources with battery integrated transmission, infrastructure that's purpose built for resiliency, urban food systems that um, all but eliminate waste. Also by the 2050, almost 90% of US population live in urban areas. So it's very important to meet the demands of growth uh, by refurbishing the infrastructure uh, in, in our cities. So two key challenges are, will our workforce be prepared with the skills they need in this new environment? And will the coming innovations benefit all New Yorkers? These are some of the challenges that um, um, initiative, CCNY Infrastructure Workforce Initiative, will try to address. Our mission is uh, the new um, uh, Infrastructure Workforce Initiative will prepare historically underserved communities for careers in 21st century digitally integrated urban infrastructure sectors. Um, and our mission is to remove traditional barriers, um, traditional and outdated divides between blue and white color labor, their practice-based curricula, simulation-based training, immersive learning, and experiential learning. Our learners will, learners will come from different educational backgrounds. We, will, um, we aim to serve minorities, women, those without high school diplomas, those without college diplomas, um, recent high school graduates, veterans, formerly incarcerated populations. So it's gonna be a very large um, and diverse group of learners. Um, and as you may know, uh, City College of New York has provided high quality and affordable education to generations of New Yorkers um, in a wide, wide variety of disciplines. Um, so 21st century smart infrastructure, um, you know, it's going to be fast tracked automation construction, highly di digitized uh, for control and management, integrated systems for multiple functions, green, resilient, sustainable cities, highly responsive to end users. Um, some of the skills that are gonna be needed to manage uh, 21st century smart infrastructure are gonna be GIS, BIM, digital project management, uh, data analytics, visualization, programmable controls, robotics, um, teamwork among experts in daily operations, advanced energy, water, transport, and coastal systems. Um, students entering um, the CCNY Infrastructure Workforce Initiative will go through the core program, 12-week 12 12 week training um, core program, which is going to uh, incorporate computer systems, data skills, project management, geospatial systems, um, such as GIS and SCADA. Um, after completing the core program, students will have an option uh, to pick one of our specializations. Um, and uh, continue uh, training for another, you know, 12 weeks. And that's gonna, some of our specializations are buildings and construction, 
transportation, um, DER electrification, water resource waste management, food infrastructure, and communications. Um, along with, um, and students are supposed to pick one of the specializations out of the six. Um, um, along with uh, classroom training, uh, we aim to have students work on real life project based internships um, with our industry partners in public and private sectors as well. So after completing the internship programs, we hope that they will have part time or full time employment with these industry partners. Um, so um, in terms of the envisioning our next generation training facility, we have identified space on campus uh, that will be designed to foster immersive and accessible learning multi-stakeholder collaboration, internship project work, uh, training spaces simulate infrastructure facilities with AI-driven platforms, virtual reality and simulation equipment, plant systems hardware, and hands-on and digital labs. Um, I'd like to, so we are in the middle of developing partnerships with different um, industry partners that includes uh, public and private sector. Um, as you, you, you know, you can see uh, the list on the screen, but if you are a representative from, from one of these industries and would like to partner with us with internships or employment, please let us know. Um, we are also developing and City College has a long history of um, existing community partnerships. Um, some of them are listed um, on the slide here, including Empower, Living Redemption, Youth Opportunity Hub, Union Settlement, Harlem Chamber of Commerce, Silicon Harlem. We already have reached out to some of these groups uh, to help us recruitment for the pilot program, which will be launched in January. Um, and in terms of the timeline, and to give you a little bit of a uh, you know detail, um, in 2022 uh, we hope to launch the pilot in at the end of January or um, beginning of February. Uh, we hope to have the facilities developed and um, uh, in core industry partnerships established. In 2023, um, we hope to begin the full operation, um, active industry project engagement. And in 2024, uh, we'll have our first graduates tracked in employment and career planning. Um, so, um, as I said, you know, if, if you'd like to recommend some of the CT high school, um, you know, students, or if you'd like to partner with us, um, please reach out. I'm going to include my um, contact information in the chat. Um, thanks for listening. Um, and Gav, thanks again for having me at the panel. This is my contact info. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. Do yeah. we have any questions or comments? You guys are so talkative today. I don't know if it's because it's a Monday afternoon. We're actually making the extraordinary time. I don't know if it's because I am such a good time manager or you guys just want to end the day and go home. But either way, we have great time management going on here. Um, before we move on to uh, all right, we have a question. What is GIS? Uh, yes, I'm going to answer really uh, quickly. It's a geographic information systems. It's a mapping um, software that's also used for data visualization. Um, urban planners, um, sometimes architects also use it, but engineers. OK, great. Also, one thing I want yeah. to point out, there is no prerequisite um, required for the pilot program. So learners of any background can, uh, can join. OK. Thanks, Salome. All right, so before I wrap up the meeting, are there any questions about any topic that was discussed, whether it's from Nicole and Department of Buildings or uh, Salome, CUNY Workforce Initiative, Dwayne Norris, Soulful uh, Synergy? If there are any questions, please let me know. Dorit Elon, um, can you unmute? What are you asking exactly? Dorit, if you're there. Okay, all right, she's kind of camera shy. All right, uh, all right, she has computer issues. Okay, so she's using the student excuse. All right, uh, any other questions, comments? Um, Salome, can you add in your contact info into the chat, please? That's Lisa asking from Mather High School. Yeah, I just added my contact info. Okay, thank, thank you. you. All right, so John Woodland, anyone that wants to connect with him, he has his new email address in the chat box. All right, I'm gonna open it up since we have some time remaining. I'm, I'd like to open up the meeting for any announcements. Um, if you are not featured on the agenda, if there's anything that you'd like to announce about yourself, your company that you'd like to share with our commission, I'll, I'll welcome you to do that. Um, please raise your hand. 
Um, I see Leah Ramble. Leah, good to see you. Go for it. Good to see you too. I did put it in the chat, but um, we have a recruitment every year and we just um, completed our recruitment, but the direct entry uh, students for your CTE students don't have to go through our direct, um, don't have to go through our recruitment. So I just want to reiterate if we have um, people that graduated last year, seniors or, or even juniors, um, if they contact me right away, because I can get them in for our test, our, our scheduled test coming up. And the, the test is really um, just a ninth grade math test, um, but they can get um, entry into our program. Um, this test is for our entire year coming up in 2022. So that's why I'm saying even high school students, because we can defer them all the way to a class at the end of the year. We typically do bring in four apprenticeship classes per year. And the ones that have graduated already um, will be able to come right in if they're if they're interested. Yeah, thanks, Leah. And just to let you folks know, I feel like sometimes us here in this commission and in the CTE world that we are very very spoiled. My phone gets rung off the hook all the time because I have all of these random people who I don't know, I don't work with. They always want to know how do I get my son or my daughter into the union. And I feel like we have all of these opportunities here. And a lot of our kids are not utilizing them. So we have Gus Diamantis here. We have Leah Rambo. We have Nicole Bertrand. We have a number of the heavy hitters from the union on this call today. So uh, Leah, if you can, before you go, just make sure that you drop in the, the content that you just shared. Make sure it's in the chat box again. Please, to our educators on this call, make sure you share this info with your kids. Um, Michael Tedisco, um, good to have you here. We connected uh, last week. I'm glad to have you a part of our commission. Please go for it. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for having me here. This is a uh, really, this is a great meeting. I really appreciate it. So my name is Michael Tedisco and I am an apprenticeship guru. By that, I mean a workforce development consultant. I love and am passionate about apprenticeship programs and it isn't just construction apprenticeship programs. My goal is to advocate and let people know that there's over 170 different apprenticeship programs in all, so many different industries, manufacturing, IT, health and human services, energy efficiency. So I do two part. I help businesses streamline the process and become sponsors because we need more sponsors, right? So they need to become a sponsor of apprenticeship programs so they can take advantage of the local, state and federal funding available to make this more cost effective and to actually grow their workforce. On the flip side, as I go to high schools, vocational schools, I'll go anywhere and everywhere to educate that we don't want kids to go to college necessarily. We want them to pursue careers. It's not about college, it's about career paths. And, and college is a, is a puzzle piece in that career path, right? So if we understand that the apprenticeship program, on-the-job training, workforce development, uh, related instruction that can be paid for by the employer, that should be what we want to, these in, uh, individuals to strive for, not just jobs. I love this for on and on. I really want to see so many people all, all believe the same thing. So thank you so much for having me here. And I hope to see you guys at the next event. But again, my name is Michael Tedisco. Apprenticeship Connections and Consulting is the name of my company. And again, I'm here to just promote and advocate for all apprenticeships inside and outside of construction, IT, manufacturing, and so forth. So thank you very much. Okay, thanks, Mike. And feel free to drop your contact info in the chat box. Uh, Mitch Matson, thanks for joining us. Go for it. I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, thanks to be back. The theater industry was shut down for a while, but we're back. Uh, my name is Mitch Matson. I'm the director of career training at Roundabout Theater Company and uh, oversee a technical theater training program that partners with some high schools here uh, for technical theater as well as theater marketing. Uh, that said, I'm giving a shout out and I'm putting a link in the chat to a national convening that's happening in December uh, 7, 8, and 9th uh, for industry professionals in the theater who are looking at the entry-level jobs in theater and the internships, the apprenticeships. Uh, it has a highlight and a focus on theater administration and technical theater. So if you have students who are interested in that, there's gonna be technical theater programs from New York, Boston, LA, DC, Seattle, that are gonna be lifted there, uh, as well as uh, arts admin jobs. Um, follow the link, I'll put in my email next so you can contact me there, but happy to chat more with anyone who's like, theater, let's talk. Okay, thanks Mitch. Okay, yeah, uh, Dr. Jax. Hey, one more question uh, for Salome and a little bit of Dwayne. 
Um, it sounded like you guys were talking some similar language and, and like connecting a lot of uh, the skills and trainings with some of these emerging careers and, and new careers. I'd love to just hear your thoughts about like the overlap and if some of the trainings that like Dwayne was talking about connects into the college level and if you feel like those are all kind of going in the same direction of to where like maybe we should start building up at the high school level. Uh, Dwayne, um, I can go ahead. Or were you, um, Dwayne? I think you were on mute, but I can, I can take the answer. Uh, I can take the question. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 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 Could you repeat the question? I was here at another meeting call that started at four. I'm trying to do double duty here. Sorry. The world is Zoom. <laughs> it's all good. I was just saying the two of you seem to be talking a lot of the same language around the emerging fields and what some of the job training and and the preparation might be in order to get into some of those. Dwayne, it was seeming like you were talking a little bit like more to get into industry and Salome, maybe like some more of the trainings at the collegiate level tying into industry. So I'm just wondering for us as educators in high school, like what, what types of skills and what types of trainings or certifications do you see as like the really go-to ones for some of these like jobs going into the next generation? Okay, understood. You want to take that one first or you want me to take a stab? Yeah, um, I can I can go ahead. This was my first time hearing about Soulful um, Synergy. Actually, it was wonderful. Um, thanks for the presentation. I saw that you work with a BPL, um, a CUNY Building Performance Lab. Also, you have a partnership with them and we are very much associated with BPL as well. So to answer Jared's question, there, sh there will definitely be alignment in terms of training that the Soulful Synergy does and then the training that we will do. So I'd like to follow up with Dwayne in the future and possibly, you know, talk about possibly the ways we can partner. Um, uh, I took down your contact information and would love to, you know, follow up. Awesome. Um, yeah, more collaboration. Um, yeah. Diana had a question, I think, for me in the chat also, and I know she does a lot with training and, and their facility has some really amazing stuff. So, I mean, as far as like what type of certifications you align with, the way we try to teach the classes, it kind of depends on which try, kind of tracks you're going down, right? Installation, you have different certifications that'll be useful to you than you would if you were trying to be an auditor or, or project manager, right? A lot of the stuff that we try to teach in the classes is heavily around the auditing process and around data, because we believe that if you can understand that component, you know the types of lamps needed and types of ballasts, and you can do an audit of a, of a good lighting system or HVAC system. Um, it translates into so many of the other roles that you would want to pursue. Um, and so our training really is meant to kind of give that broad introduction to the clean energy industry in terms of, again, what are the types of laws and policies that are driving the market, uh, where the funding is, what type of laws are creating fines and penalties for people that they need to be aware of, um, and then how to audit those systems. But it's not just so that you can become an auditor, it's so that you can have the knowledge to become a PM or whatever track you want to go down. So we kind of do look at it by... Uh, you know, kind of in that lane, but I'll say, you know, if you want to pursue a certification that'd be useful for you regardless, I'd say, you know, CEA, the, the Certified Energy uh, Auditor, or the BPI certifications that Diane and her organization provide, some of the AEA credentials. Um, I just recently took the GPRO, uh, so they have the Fundamentals of Clean Energy or Fundamentals of Green uh, GPRO. I also took the Construction Management course. Um, and in fact, if anyone wants to email me, um, Urban Green Council, who provides the uh, GPRO, the Green Professionals, uh, certification. They have a one-day, seven-hour course. It's good for CE credits, etc. Um, they have one tomorrow, and they're going to be announcing another class in uh, November. But it's a seven-hour class, and you get your certification uh, for um, the construction management. And we have a code that they provided to us uh, that participants can leverage for uh, free training. It normally, it costs about hundred dollars. So, um, if someone does want to reach out, we've been extending that to our graduates and alumni of our program, and um, you know, happy to find a way to connect. Uh, students that you have to that resource as well. Gav, if you don't mind, um, I'd like to say something. Yes, please. Hi, guys. Um, Dwayne, that was really excellent information. My name is Diane Gonzalez. Um, I represent Association for Energy Affordability. I recently introduced myself to Gav and some of the schools. Um, we are much like what Dwayne is doing right now, which is a training facility for young adults looking for uh, opportunities in energy efficiency. We are also an employer. And so at the moment, we are looking to fill numerous positions for the pipeline of career opportunities that are emerging. 
and uh, we facilitate trainings in building science, energy auditor, building operations. Um, and so we're looking to develop these collaborations because much like you asked, uh, the question is where do we begin this training and where does it, how do we collaborate to make sure that the young people are aware of these opportunities and where those career paths lead to. And so it was our objective when reaching out to GOV to really target young adults in ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th grade um, to see how we can collaborate to provide training, um, internship opportunities and jobs. And so one of the relationships, Gav, I just wanted to update you, um, design, um, I don't remember the full name, um, Boat from the Bronx. Um, we're trying to see how we collaborate to get young adults into our programs to see how we can hire those young adults. We're also looking for your post students who've finished, we're looking for jobs we want to be able to collaborate with them. And I know you mentioned that that's of interest to you, Gov, and it's very much our interest as well. Um, so we are hiring and we're screening young adults right now. We want to see how we can help either via internship or via educational opportunities, or um, just to see how we can collaborate and provide more information for these opportunities. Thank you. Yep, thanks, Diana. Can you share your email in the chat box, please? Will do, will do. Yeah, and Diane's team, they have an amazing facility in the Bronx. If you haven't seen it or been to it, definitely. It's a, like a whole live learning lab. I've heard amazing things about it. And uh, part of the collaboration um, that AEA's team and one of our partners um, at Energy DC created was a training program specifically for the buildings operations and maintenance staff uh, in local union DC 37. And so it's like literally the building operators who are currently you know, operating and managing these buildings are getting the same trainings that we're trying to provide younger and younger and younger folks so that they can be aware. So just know that, you know, we're trying to meet it at both levels, but I think that introducing these opportunities to the youth is extremely important so that they are familiar with these building systems when they get into these roles. Um, because my, one of my mentors here always says, it's like the worst thing ever when you do, you know, the full retrofit and you upgrade the building, you give them all these, you know, bad, you know, beautiful technologies, and then the supers don't know how to manage them. And they just put everything to, you know, automatic settings, and it just doesn't, or manual override, and, you know, doesn't really make sure the building is operating efficiently. So those are the things that we're trying to do is make sure that the, there, there is this alignment across all these different uh, roles. Yes, thank you, Duane. Yep. Yes, Lauren. Uh, I just wanted to give a little pitch for ACE if there is time. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, uh, hey everyone, I'm Lauren Fiore. I work at the ACE Mentor Program of Greater New York. Uh, thank you, Gav, always for including us in these commissions and inviting us to them. I, I've emailed a lot of the CTE teachers about ACE, but in case, uh, just to give our final push, um, we are a free after school program to introduce your high school students to careers in architecture, engineering, and construction management. We're a full year mentorship program. Students meet with the same group of mentors each week to learn about the different disciplines, how they interact, how they differ, what uh, what pathways are available to become each of these different uh, disciplines. They do fun oh, yeah. activities with their mentors. They do a mock design project with their mentors. And then these are their mentors for life. These architects, civil structural engineers, mechanical engineers, and CMs. These students can connect with them throughout their college journey or if they take a different pathway and really stay connected with them for internships, career help, and more. Um, we are completely free. We are starting up this week and soon. So if your students are interested, you still have some people who want to sign up. Now is a great time. And we are also approved for the WBL hours. So we do track the attendance and send to you all so that you could um, make sure your students get the hours. So it's a lot of fun. I know your students are learning these things in school. So we're a good compliment to help them get their networking skills, public speaking skills. And so I just wanted to give another push for ACE. Uh, I'll put my contact info if anyone has any questions, but thank you again. All right, thanks, Lauren. And as you can see, we have a wealth of opportunities and resources in this commission. You can't say that you don't have any opportunity to connect with others in the industry or within the CTE world, all right? So hopefully take advantage of everything that you've heard today. And if there are no further questions or comments or criticisms or compliments, I will dismiss you all. Thank you for making this job so fun. And um, I haven't decided when the next uh, commission meeting will be. I'm debating if I should have a next one in January or wait till after February. February is gonna be our virtual career exploration month. So it's gonna be um, very, very jam-packed. 
And again, welcome to the new CTE teachers. I wonder how y'all got plugged into your, your current jobs. I, I don't know. Maybe there was a handsome Indian guy in central office that helped you out. Um, <laughs> but um, congratulations on your job. And thank you all for all that you do. Recording is now ended. And I'm going to stick around for a few more minutes. If anybody needs to talk to me directly, enjoy the rest of your week and enjoy the rest of the school year. Thank you all. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Gav. Great thank job. You. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Gav. Nice meeting you. Bye, guys.